when you see someone kicking back, chilling and smoking, doing what they do, and they blow a cloud of smoke and it forms in front of their face, you know what kind of cloud that is? Here are the different type of clouds you need to be aware of. Let go! Boom! Understanding the different type of clouds can be a very fun game to play because pretty much every day that you go outside, there's going to be some type of cloud in the sky. So understanding the names of these clouds and some of the characteristics of them, can you can learn this pretty quickly just by going outside and looking up at the sky. The more that you can learn on the ground, the cheaper it's going to be for you. Learn as much as you can on the ground and from watching videos on this channel so that way you can make your pilot experience as inexpensive as possible. Let's run them different types of clouds right now. Let go! Boom! Turn off the lights. Hey, one time we back off in that thing. Let's run these different types of clouds. There's really only three different types of clouds that you need to concern yourself with. And then we're going to talk about at the end of the video two bonus types of clouds that you really need to be concerned with, particularly if you fly in certain types of terrain. But let's talk about the three primary types right now. A, numero uno. We got, of course, cumulus clouds, a very popular type. It's nice and fluffy. So if you ever go outside and you look up in the sky and you see, of course, fluffy cotton ball like clouds, that more than likely is a cumulus cloud. Very easily recognizable, a term you were probably already familiar with long before you got deep into aviation and started your pilot journey. Cumulus clouds, very popular. So if you go outside and you see those white, fluffy, cotton ball looking clouds, that is a cumulus cloud. Numero dos on the list is a stratus cloud. This is kind of a thin layer. You don't really, you can't really tell where the cloud starts and where it ends. It's not really big and fluffy. It's almost like a thin sheet thin layer and it usually sits very low, that is a stratus cloud. Want to be aware of what a stratus cloud it is and of course how it's different than the characteristics of a cumulus cloud. And then number three, the cirrus cloud. This looks almost very wispy like. Just think about you chilling with your girl. Your girl's a baddie. She got the baddest of everything and when she whisk her hair around, when she folds her head back and starts playing with her hair and all that good stuff, hey that means she like you. But that also means that that wispy asking that she got, that's what that cirrus cloud looks like. That wispy, thin layer, almost like ice crystal form kind of cloud. You want to think about that as well. Forms up very high in the atmosphere. Boom! So now that you know the three primary types of clouds, there's also some descriptors that can be used as a prefix or a suffix attached to that cloud to kind of give it a little bit more detail, to kind of paint the picture a little bit deeper for you. Those three prefixes or suffixes are usually going to be alto, towering, and nimbus. Alto just simply means high. Towering means tall, and nimbus means rain. So you want to familiarize yourself with those three descriptors that can be attached to any of these clouds. And I'll show you an example of how it works. Someone can say maybe they have a alto stratus cloud. What does that mean exactly? Well, alto means high. Stratus clouds we just talked about is like these thin little layery clouds that don't really have a whole lot of shape to them, usually form very low. Well, if it's an alto stratus cloud, that means what? It's forming high. So you can see it higher than where it normally is. Instead of it being really low to the ground, maybe you go up you know, 10,000 feet, 10, 15 bands up, and you find yourself a stratus cloud, an alto stratus cloud out there just floating around in that thing. That's how you can use these descriptors. Something like a towering. Say if there's a towering cumulus cloud, what does that mean? Well, you know cumulus clouds, is when they start towering like that, that's kind of like when a thunderstorm is getting ready to form. Let's say that cloud is towering, it's building, it's stretching itself out. It's dealing with that you know unstable, non-standard lapse rate, and it's doing what it's doing. It's getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, getting ready to build into a thunderstorm. <laughs> then we know what's happening there. It's a towering cumulus cloud. And then, of course, if it starts to rain, because that's one of the stages of it being a thunderstorm, in, in that mature stage and it rains, then it turns into a cumulonimbus cloud. So you see how these words alto, towering, and nimbus can be used in a prefix or suffix kind of phase to describe a lot of these different types of clouds. So once you've nailed down the three different primary types of clouds and you understand their shapes and what they look like, then you can start thinking to yourself, oh, I walked outside and I seen a very fluffy cotton ball-like cloud, but it was starting to tower. So, hmm, that may be a towering cumulus cloud. 
or cumulus cloud and it was starting to rain, then what did it? Cumulonimbus cloud. So that's how you can kind of run this through. And again, there's usually always some form of clouds in the sky each and every day that you walk outside. So you can walk outside and immediately look up at the sky and just start running into your mind. What type of cloud do you think that is? Then maybe look to your left or to your right, different directions and kind of understand, hmm, how would you classify that cloud? When you're out with your instructor and you're walking out to the aircraft, look up in the sky, start to point out different kind of clouds and see can you name exactly what they are. These are all ways that you can get kind of practice tries and really learning this material as you're going through the process. The more that you can learn on the ground, the cheaper it's going to be for you. The more that you have to learn inside the classroom or the more you have to learn in the sky, the more expensive it's going to be for you on your pilot journey. Utilize this channel and every all the resources that you have at your disposal to learn as much as you can on your own. The different types of clouds. Hey, let's go. Boom. Now for that bonus two types of clouds that you want to know about. And this is if you fly around certain terrain and that terrain is mountainous terrain. If you live anywhere near the mountains, are you going to be doing a lot of your training around mountains? Or even if you just have a strong desire to fly around mountains after you get your pilot's license, you definitely want to be aware of two types of clouds that like to form around mountains. One of them is the rotor cloud. Just think about a rotor of the mechanical mechanism of a rotor, that nice round shape. What does it do? That nice round shape, where that nice round shape that's whisking around in that circular kind of motion, that's exactly what's forming. That's the kind of cloud layer and the motion that's forming around a mountainous area, particularly it's being created by the wind. So just think about if strong, if you had mountains and you had say rows of mountains in a nice beautiful mountainous kind of area, and then you had wind that was crashing in on those mountains, what is that wind gonna start to do? It's gonna start to form almost like waves over those mountains and in between those mountains, those stretches of mountains. Just think about the waves in the ocean. The only difference is instead of that wave-like motion happening in the water in the ocean, it's happening with the wind cutting through and over the mountains. This is gonna to start to form those rotor kind of clouds. You can probably see this sometimes if you're driving around a mountainous area and you see those conditions and the wind and everything taking form and having that kind of effect. Always be aware of that because as you can imagine, that caused a significant amount of turbulence. So if you're in that kind of situation, you definitely want to be aware of the turbulence of flying anywhere around that, particularly if those strong winds are just cutting in and out and making that circular kind of motion, that wave-like motion over the mountains. The next one you want to be aware of is lenticular. A lenticular is simply kind of a similar situation where it's being caused by that wind, but instead of it just cutting through the mountains and wave like up and down, it's kind of like going up. Just think about whenever wind blows, always ask yourself this. If I'm around a mountain and wind hits a mountain, what is that wind going to do? It's going to more than likely go up and cause some sort of motion. It's going to give you that wave-like motion when it's cutting through various mountains, or it's going to kind of give you that motion where it kind of just goes up and then forms that cloud layer but then it dissipates on the back end of it and it goes down a little bit. So it goes up the mountain, hovers over. If you ever see that cloud layer kind of hovering over a mountain, almost like it's capping off on that mountaintop, then dissipating by, that is a lenticular cloud. And you want to be aware of that as well because that can also cause a lot of turbulence. That's what you want to be aware of when clouds are starting to form around mountainous areas. Clouds are starting to form around mountainous areas. It usually means in a lot of different scenarios, unstable kind of conditions and turbulent kind of conditions for you. So you want to be aware of that and you always want to have your ears and eye open at all times. Lego boom! So every day you step outside the crib is an opportunity for you to learn about the different types of clouds. So run that in your mind to make sure you can kind of drill that in and understand what kind of conditions they cause and those prefixes and suffixes that can be used to give a little bit more extra detail to describe them, whether it's high, whether it's towering, or whether it's a rain cloud a hey, one time don't forget to like this video comment on this video share this video and subscribe to this channel i am donovan batiste hey this is leadership mindset a place where you can come for free and fun information about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot because i want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swinging and banging that thing let go love you one time